Tainment Radio Worldwide Sound. TalkTainmentRadio.com. We give you a reason to come. The world's greatest radio. We give you a reason to stay. Radio, the way it should be heard. You got the power. The views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guest and not necessarily those of TalkTainmentRadio.com, the management, the staff, or KE World Network, LLC. This is the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio, radio the way it should be heard. And now, Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you, only confuse you, only confuse you. I want to say good morning, good afternoon, and maybe good night, depending upon what part of the world that you are now listening to the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and you're listening to it exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com. That is radio the way it should be heard. Internet radio is off the chain. By word of announcement, listen, next week, which would be September the 2nd, I believe, we will not have a live show, not have a live show. So I think Brother Ed and them are going to go back into the archives and and replay one of uh, our shows uh, at 10 10 a.m. So you will be able to listen to a, a replay. But it will be no live show because we are going to be off for Labor Day. Am I correct, Ed? I'm getting the shake head. So that means, yes, we will not be on. But we will resume next, uh, or rather Wednesday after that, which would be the 9th. Yeah, and then we'll have a, a, a live show show then. So I think we got that out the way. been a very busy week. I've, well, I've still been in the country this week, but been all over the um, map, you could say. People have been calling. And people have been calling and asking about you, Mr. Fuller. I was on a couple of radio shows, and I stuck right with the script, the script that is in me, (laughs) concerning racism and white supremacy, or racism, which is white supremacy, and the antidote to that is justice. And I have got my own uh, definition of justice, which is almost like yours, but it's what, what, what comes out of me. But um, anyway, uh, and had an opportunity to promote the book, and which reminds me, we didn't do that last week, my bad. But listen, and I can tell by the emails or gmails that I've gotten, and I want to thank you, and Mr. Fuller thanks you, a lot of people are beginning to buy the book, and that is really important. And the word guide, as a matter of fact, I have, uh, let's see, whoops, uh, let me go back here, let's see, I have five uh gmails from victor let's see who else do i have here i have uh, okay victor daryl stephen robin and anthony which i'm they asked some great questions and a lot of the questions came from uh the uh, book which is called the united independent compensatory uh, code system concept a textbook workbook for thought speech and or action for victims of racism which is white supremacy they have um, re- called in or, or written me and I'm going to ask try to get to their uh, questions okay let me uh, introduce to some and present to others the man from Washington DC the author of this great fine book I call it the UICCSC and man, oh man, a fantastic book. Mr. Neely Fuller. Mr. Neely Fuller, presenting to you to the world, introducing you to some. Good morning, and how are you this fine day? I'm still learning. You are still learning. Good, good. Aren't we all? <laughs> and you are, trust me, my brother, you are waking up minds all across this country. And someone, by the way, asked me um, not too long ago, what's going to happen when uh, Neely Fuller uh, uh, is no longer uh, able to do the show, uh, uh, what's going to happen? And I said this, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Fuller, but I would hope 
or I would think that that your hope would be that the information that you are dispersing, that it would not only resonate within ourselves, but would leave a mark so that we're able to carry on this great work that you uh, that you are doing, that you would plant those seeds in us that we would continue to to produce or to yes to produce justice. What is your thought on that before we go to the um, uh, emails or gmails? Oh, well, that's why I named the book the United or the concept too the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. And this program is called the compensatory concept, meaning what? You don't have to have a Neely Fuller around. Actually, what we what Neely Fuller is doing is trying to follow logic. Logic came with the universe, so all I'm doing I'm just acting as a signpost to point to that. Mm-hmm. In other words, I'm just pointing to what I, what is always there, but I hadn't been seeing it. I mean, I hadn't been thinking of terms of just follow the logic. Logic came with the universe. What is logic? Cause and effect. Fire will burn. Water is wet. Don't get away from those basics. When someone is saying something, listen to every word that they're saying and start asking questions. Because all problems are solved, and the world is full of problems, through the process of questions and answers. That's what we haven't been tapping into. Because the white supremacists always discourage the non-white peoples of the world from asking questions. Because when you start asking questions, the answers start gravitating toward wherever the questions are coming from. Mm-hmm. That's, just, that's just the nature of the universe. This is how inventions are made. People are just throwing out uh, questions. An inventor is throwing out questions. How can I put this thing together that I'm putting together and and be able to tell time. Uh, How can I put this thing together and be able to have a person fly through the air? These are questions. And so when a person asks these questions, the answer starts gravitating. The answer starts coming toward wherever the questions are coming from. Mm -hmm. For some strange reason, that's just the nature of the universe. So all Neely Fuller really does is this points this out. I'm just a signpost. I don't have the answers to it. That's why I always say that I'm still learning. You're still learning. I don't have, you know, there's millions of answers to questions. But we don't ask the questions. If you never ask the questions, the answers never start coming. Yes, sir. So everybody should always be in a questioning mode. Mm -hmm. So when Neely Fuller is gone, the universe is still here. I just came into the universe. So Neely Fuller is just one of these people that's passing through. But in passing through, I just happened to notice, hey, things are always done through the process of questions and answers. It took me years, decades, because nobody never told me this. But, you know, it just I just stumbled up on it. Yes, sir. So really, it was always there. Mm-hmm. That's all anybody has to do. Mm-hmm. And we can solve this race problem and everything else just through the, pro- the process of questions and answers. Through, yes, sir. Everything. Yes, sir. Okay. So, um, John, there is your answer, and it came from the man himself. That's what we're going to do when um, Neely Fuller is no longer here, or even me, or even you. Hopefully, you'll be able to pass that on. Now, if you would like to get in contact with the show, you can by calling one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six, or you can Gmail me at seven Mister Bobby at gmail dot com. And speaking about that, we're going to go to that right now. Uh, this is from Victor. He's um, in uh, Canada, and thank you, worldwide listeners, because I have received a, a lot of emails from um, around the world. Um, Victor. Uh, he's from uh, Pickerington, on Ontario. Anyway, um, he was asking you a question, and um, let's see. Uh, maybe this can be a question for, uh, okay, this week. My question is how to use the textbook workbook together. One area of activity could be an education. Uh, please use the, the example. Say that when you go to school, and you need to learn a skill for a job, the teachers have a bias against you. The teachers have the skills and knowledge you need, but they hold back. 
How can a person who is a victim of white supremacy and racism use your book, Mr. Fuller, the United Independent Compensatory, Compensatory Code, to live a life with self-respect and accomplish goals? This is from Victor in Ontario, Canada. Well, I hope I understand the question, but I heard the word, the term self-respect uh, mentioned. So self-respect comes from self. It's not but one kind of respect anyway, and that is self-respect. So what exactly is self-respect? It's refusing to tell yourself something that's not true and trying to believe something that's not true. That's when you don't have it. You have it automatically when you always tell yourself the truth. If you don't know something, you stand up and say you don't know. I think there's a quote by Mark uh, Twain. Uh, every now and then I mentioned Mark Twain. Uh, Mark Twain said, I was proud to be able to answer promptly, and I did. I said I didn't know. That's the best possible thing you can say when you don't know, because saying that you don't know, first of all to yourself and then to the whole world, is the way that you learn. The whole purpose for going to school, and this is what what we call going to school now, is a school time. But actually, all time is school time. There's no such thing as being out of school. People use the term, you know, uh, it, you know, it's a cliche. Are you are you in school? You're always in school. The entire universe is a university. So you're supposed to be learning every day, just walking down the street. What's that over there? What's, what is that building go, going up over there? These are questions. All schools... Everything about a school is nothing but what? Questions and answers. So you're always in school because you always do have and or should have questions that you get answers to. That's all school is, questions and answers. That's all a courtroom is, questions and answers. You're finding out things that you didn't know before somebody told you. Or before you just looked around and did some what they call research. I don't know what they, exactly why they call it research. You're just searching, you know, researching. I don't know what, you know, but you're searching for answers. And you get answers. So that's school. And you, you are in school from the day that you are born. And you're in school the day that you die. So this, but I kind of digress there for a moment, but... I'm trying to put an envelope around that thing called self-respect because self-respect is just a matter of knowing that you don't know. And then you try to find out rather than pretend that you already know. A lot of people do that because they're trying to impress other people. No, no. You have self-respect or you have respect by not lying to yourself. And let the entire world know that you're not going to lie to yourself. And when you're in a school and a teacher is what you might call talking down to you, talking past you and all like that, just hold up your hand and ask for permission to ask questions because that's what you're there for. And it doesn't make any difference how the teacher feels about you or anything like that. Just go ahead and say, is it okay for you to ask questions? Because if the teacher can answer the questions that you ask, that's what you're there for anyway. It's not personal. It's business. Hmm. Okay. Very good. All righty. hope that answered uh, your question, my brother. Uh, let's go to uh, Patrick here. Um, he was saying that Mr. Fuller, uh, Mr. Fuller said that white people study everything, uh, such as his comment recently about how white people will watch a grain of sand on the ocean floor for hundreds of years in order to understand its purpose. Several articles have been published in recent years about how certain ant species have uh, enslaved other species of ants. F further, scientists have found that 67% of the world's species are parasitic, 
as a defense strategy, the enslaved ants secretly sabotage their masters by killing their larvae, i.e. killing their babies. Certainly I'm not suggesting or advocating killing anybody's babies, but I find it interesting that enslaved ants develop a code and a long-term strategy that spans at least a generation until they break free. My question comes down to the basic principle of an eye for an eye. If white people have gotten so dirty and downright vicious with black people, why is it not just for black people to study, analyze, and even connive to return that treatment of black? I mean, ants have enough sense to escape their captors by uh, any means necessary. What's t t uh, taking the people of color so long to escape this predicament? Well, we haven't addressed it. That's the answer. In other words, that's not our focus. See, people usually can solve a problem that they focus on as mm -hmm. a priority. Now, the word, key word here is focus. What is the focus of the black people of the planet? When black people get up in the morning, what do they think about most of the time? Do they think about replacing the system of racism with the system of justice? I would think not. That is not the priority in the average black person's mind on this planet. The average black person's focus is then what? Under the law of compensation. Because if you're not thinking about one thing, you're thinking about something else. So what is it that the average black person thinks about? And so I, I ask this question, because mm -hmm. here again, when you ask a question, the answer starts gravitating toward you, okay? So the question is, the average black person on the planet, right this minute, wherever he or she may be, what is that person thinking about? Yes, Once sir. they are in a position where they have had an adequate amount of food, an adequate amount of shelter. Okay, these 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 are these are basics. I mean, you know, your your body health. If you're not in immediate pain, because if you're in immediate pain, I mean, if you are bleeding or something like that, that's your immediate focus. But I'm talking about just the average person going about their everyday pursuit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What are they really thinking about? Even if they're doing something else, they might be fishing because that's necessary. you mm -hmm. got to catch fish today. You're a fisherman in a village, and so you got to go and catch some fish. you got to be at work and catch those fish. But along with that, what are you really thinking about as they focus? You're usually thinking about another black person, and that's not a problem solver. I'm going to say that again. If what you are thinking about is another black person or persons like your tribal members or your sorority members or your fraternity members or just your family or those gang members down on the other corner, I mean, that you are planning on doing some gang banging with, with your gang, Truth be told, these are the things that black people usually think about. Yes, sir. All right. When they are given a little bit of space to do some thinking <clears> on their own, when it is not in pain, immediate pain, or they've been fed, or you had adequate sleep, now you're thinking about some other black people. Mm. That is not a recipe for replacing the system of white supremacy with justice. With justice, that's you're right. thinking about some type of social interaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Girlfriends getting together, getting together and doing what? Oh, just getting together. I mean, you know, we're looking forward to that. I mean, we got four more months, and then we're going on vacation, and we're going to go all go together, and we're going to get on a train, a, a charter an airplane, and whatnot, and we're just going to be running up down the house, giggling and whatnot, and, and doing a whole lot of eating and putting on a whole lot of weight that we don't need. But truth be told, this is what we think about more than anything else in the world, hmm. truth be told. Truth be told. And that is not a recipe for problem solving. For a problem I'll solving. i that right now. Okay. Because the, the record shows that. That's mm -hmm. just not nearly full of uh, talking. The reason we haven't solved problems 
is because we spend all this time thinking about each other and doing trivial things or things that are absolutely destructive. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're listening to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., heard exclusively on TalkDamitRadio.com. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and if you would like to get in contact with the show, you may do so by calling one 972 or you can gmail me at 7 Bobby at gmail.com. And um, I will try to get you on this week, but uh, I may not because I have several backed up. Let's go to the phone lines. Um, line number, what is that? Line number one? Line number one. You are now on with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. What is your question in brief? Yes, good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. I'm Tyreek from the Bronx. It's interesting hearing uh, Mr. Fuller talk about uh, school and teaching because last night I wrote a question for him, and my question is, would it be wise for us to build our own schools or institutions to teach our children about compensatory law, which is basically the law of the universe? Um, and, and education is all about problem solving. And as Mr. Fuller just said, all we think about is, you know, traveling and doing all things in excess that are not problem solving. So should it be wise uh, for us to uh, teach our children while they're young at home or uh, in institutions about how to uh, face the system of white supremacy? Okay. Thank you very much, Tyreek. Mr. Fuller? Now, this morning I was thinking about places. Now, some words have been used right now in this discussion. Uh, our own schools. Here again, I have to reiterate, you're always in school. It's not a school is not a place, yet it is a place. It's every place, wherever you happen to be. You just don't have to go in some four walls. See, we got to get this four wall mentality out of our minds altogether. I mean that you have to go to a certain place in order for you to now declare, oh, I just walked through this door, so where am I now? Oh, now you are in school. Well, where were you before you came through that door? See, well, I wasn't in school then because I, I just came through this door because this door, this door that somebody made, and I opened the door, and I walked through it, and then now I'm in school. But if I walk back out of this door... I am no longer, quote, unquote, in school. It's called thinking outside the box, because what we call a school is a box. The school is the universe. You are in the universe. You are in the greatest university that there is, everywhere you are, every minute of every day. So you teach and you learn everywhere you are, every day. Now, we really, you might say, quote, unquote, subconsciously, whatever that means. I don't like that term, really. I mean, you know, if you're thinking at all, that's conscious. I mean, so you, you're doing this everywhere you are. But the white supremacists teach us, oh, if you don't come overseas here and go in this door, and it's got a roof over there, and it's got some walls, I call it poor wallism, you know, then you're not actually in school. So you've got to come a thousand miles and walk through this door. And then when you walk in and take a seat, and then somebody comes out and, you know, waves a wand or something and says, now you are in school. You are now beginning to learn. But you learn things before you came there. For one thing, you learn how to get there. So that was in school. But you don't call it that. So think that way. Learn to think outside of that box, because the white supremacists got everything all chopped up in little boxes. I mean, real neat that they can control. And the first box that they try to control among non-white people is non-white people's minds that are in their heads. So that's the box that they want to control. So we have to think outside of all of these boxes mm -hmm. and all of these lines that they have drawn for us and say that they are boundaries. And if you are not in a certain place at a certain time, you can't do this and you can't do that. Why? Because I said so. That's why. Well, that's a real box. Yeah, a real box. Right. All yeah. right. Thank you, Brother Tyreek from Brooklyn. We And we really do thank you for your calls that you, uh, that you consistently... 
um, make. You're listening again to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com. That is radio the way it should be heard. Uh, and you can be heard if you call one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six, or you can Gmail me at seven Mr. Bobby at Gmail dot com. And uh, I can't promise you to, that this week I will get your uh, questions on, but I do save them and uh, entertain them for a ne- uh, for another show. Speaking about another show, uh, Mr. Fuller, uh, I missed it last week. Uh, I'm not going to miss it this week. Just speak a, a minute or two about your book before we go to the next question. Yes, uh, the, the book, uh, you know, book, B, book, B, book is spelled <laughs> B-O-O-K, so you might say that at first B-O is right on the way to being a box, you might say. You know, you add a couple more word, uh, letters, mm-hmm. to it, but a book is something that you can pick up, and you can pick up my book by going to ProduceJustice.com, and that's the textbook workbook for victims of white supremacy and you can use this book which is a box of you know a few words in it and whatnot which is what you do when you go into a box called a school and they have other boxes in there called books i mean you know so you look at that too but uh that you can get this book or this box by going to producejustice.com and you can turn the pages and you will learn some of the things maybe that they have in some schools and maybe some of the things that they don't have in quote unquote other schools so this book is about learning how to compensate for the existence of something that is very poisonous called racism and or white supremacy but you can get it by going to producejustice.com all righty. And uh, before we move on, there is an additional word guide for sale. Is that correct? Yes. And there's a word guide. I mean, that just like I dealt with just now, talking about a book. What is a book? What is a school? When are you in school? You know, so the word guide teaches us a little bit about what to look for when it comes to words. Okay. Because the white supremacists master people's minds through the use of words when you master somebody's mind by using words you're mastering that person you're Mm -hmm. telling that person what's important what is not important Mm -hmm. where to go what to do and that's what the white supremacists do through what manipulating words manipulating words they tell you what's important Mm -hmm. and you go chasing after something that's important why because they said so they say go buy that diamond and you say, well, diamond, what's a diamond? Diamond is something that you must have. Diamond is a girl's best friend. You don't have any friends if you don't have a diamond. You better go get that diamond. <laughs> and you say, well, where can I get a diamond? Because i got to have some friends. Oh, you get the diamond from me. Which <laughs> means you're going to have to be working a long time to get a lot of money to pay for that diamond. And then when you get that diamond, you got a friend. Okay. All right, go to ProduceJustice.com, and you can get the book and the additional word guide. Okay, uh, this this comes from Stephen, and um, we'll get, try to get in as much as we can, and maybe on the other side of the break. Hello, uh, Mr. Bobby, Mr. Fuller. My name is Stephen. I'm an avid listener of the compensatory concept from abroad. Uh, Mr. Fuller and Dr. Wilson have, have opened my eyes to the global reach of racism, white supremacy, and the truth is ugly. I have two quick questions for Mr. Fuller. Number one, how can racism be stopped if every time someone tries to rise against it, they are killed or censored from the media, even if they are white or influential leaders, they're not exempt. And my second question is, if white supremacy is global, how can one feel optimistic about a future abroad? It's everywhere, 24-7, no matter how well-managed, smart, hardworking, or fluent in language I am, I never compare to the status of a white person. I look forward to hearing your thoughts, Stephen. That's why we have to have a compensatory code. What is a compensatory code or a counter-racist code? It means you have racism. Racism is a poison. For every poison, there is an antidote. And so what you do is just figure out day by day what the situation that you're in and 
the racists have a code for everything that they do. They will do one thing, which means you do something else. Mm. And that something else is designed to be an antidote to whatever it is they're doing. Okay. And it starts with just the things that you say. Okay. And we're going we're yes. to have to break it there. Talk to him at Radio.com. Check us out on WCRS FM 98.3 Wednesdays and Sunday evenings. Blogs and podcasts are available. Download the Talk to him at Radio.com app to your cell or tablet. We go where you go. Okay, we're going to be on the other side of the break. M maybe more answers to this question and some callers on the line and Gmails. All this n and more coming up on TalkTainmentRadio.com. TalkTainmentRadio.com is the premier Internet radio platform offering 40-plus talk radio-style programs professionally produced, optimized for online distribution, featuring Columbus, Ohio on-air personalities. TalkTainmentRadio.com offers listeners diverse programming options covering topics such as arts and culture, love, life, and relationships, technology, religion, paranormal activities, local and national politics, women's issues, alongside health and wellness. Listeners can access their favorite TalkTainmentRadio.com programs free of cost through the website. Download the TTR app to your cell phone and you can take us wherever you go. We have programs on demand to fit your schedule through our podcast. The address is TalkTainmentRadio.com. Do you have a written plan for your personal success? If not, you must attend SWATS, the key to improved performance. Presented by Tom Dillard and Associates. September 17, 2015, 8 a.m. to 12 noon. Call 614-504-3166 to register or go to TomDillard.org and click on Events, the key to improved performance. Hello, I'm Lisa Stockdell from Senior Agenda, and I would like to encourage you to visit the Worthington Retirement Community here in Central Ohio. I've had the privilege of working closely with the staff and residents over at the Worthington for the past couple of years, and I can promise you they make a wonderful community. If you or a loved one are considering retirement living, you'll want to pay them a visit before you make your next move. When you choose to join the Worthington, you'll gain the peace of mind that comes from knowing that their independent retirement lifestyle simplifies your retirement living. They take care of the cooking, shopping, and cleaning so that you can focus on the things that are truly important to you. Plan to visit the Worthington today. They're conveniently located at 1201 Riva Ridge Boulevard in Gahanna, Ohio. You can call ahead to schedule a tour at 614-933-8640 or just stop in. Be sure to tell them Lisa sent you and enjoy your retirement living. It's that time again. Shattering the Myths, National Community Health Workers Consortium and Action Ohio Coalition for Battered Women is sponsoring their Women and Teen Girls Empowerment Event. Shattering the Myths, Looking for Daddy. Saturday, September the 12th at East High School at 1500 East Broad Street, Columbus, Ohio. It begins at 8 and ends at 4, serving a continental breakfast, lunch, with free child care. But registration is required. So you may call 855-757-3767, 855-757-3767, or go to info at nchwc.org. Info at nchwc.org to reserve your place. Shattering the myth, looking for daddy. Saturday, September the 12th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. This show, A Conversation with Dawn Karima, has been nominated for an Indigenous Music Award, which is just such a great honor. Take a minute and please vote at AboriginalPeople'sChoice.com or Indigenous Music Awards. You can just find it on Google. For this show, A Conversation with Dawn Karima, and my CD, The Stars of Heaven, for Best Gospel, and this show for Best Radio Program. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell everybody. Stop by and vote and tell them this is where great things happen. Hey guys, let's play some video games. This new dad plays video games with his sons. But the challenge feels like he's lifting a metric ton. So many buttons. His avatar just stares at the walls, twists and turns and somehow falls. Help me. He's tangled up in the controller's cord. I just don't understand this crazy digital world. Crazy, crazy digital world. But the love from his kids is totally apparent. Ooh. See, you don't have. 
have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. You should have just played catch. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. Goodwill is a global social services enterprise and the leading nonprofit provider of job training programs and career services in the United States and Canada. To pay for its program, Goodwill sells donated clothes and other household items in more than 2,700 stores and online at shopgoodwill.com. Goodwill uses the revenue earned from these sales to fund job training, employment placement services, and other community programs. The goal of the campaign is to increase goods donations to Goodwill will inspire an emotional connection to the Goodwill brand and to elevate preference for Goodwill. It may be hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. FeedThePig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to sell all your belongings and live in a commune. These dungarees belong to all of us now, Tom. You don't need to get a second job as a stuntman. You just need FeedThePig.org. Don't get left behind. Get tips and tools at FeedThePig.org. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. The United Independent Compensatory Code System concept by Neely Fuller is considered as one of the substantial and basic books for understanding and effectively countering racism. Neely Fuller will turn upside down everything you've heard and everything you think you know about racism and how it works. Call area code 202-484-5461. 202-484-5461. I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Go ahead. Make my day. You got the power. All righty, we are back for a second slice of the action. Hey, listen, we always seem to have uh, a lot of uh, more callers and more emails than we do show, and there's something you can do about it. In fact, believe it or not, you are really in control of the show, and you really make the show go good. All you have to do, I'll call it bang your monkey. Just write into the general manager here and tell him that you want the show to go for another hour. And Mr. Fuller and myself have, we're already in agreement with that, that we can do that according to our schedules. Uh, if you'd like it to, to go another hour, hey, let us know and, uh, or let the ma- general manager know, uh, Ed Dozier and man, you know, we will try to, uh, work something out so we can go because really we want to get all of your interesting calls and, and all of your, uh, Gmails in and that is important. If you'd like to get in contact with the show, you can by calling 1-877-932-9766. Or you can Gmail me at 7 Bobby at gmail.com. For those who just joined, you are now listening to the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and this is radio the way it should be heard. That is talktainmentradio.com. Uh, Stephen, uh, in order, you know, for your question to be answered, just remember this. Since you asked basically, um, you know, what are we to do, uh, to, to rise against racism, produce, um, Replace it with a system of justice. That's what you have to do. And um, and how can you feel optimistic about it? Well, think on justice. Justice will produce that. And then and if you get the word guy, there is Mr. Fuller's compensatory definition of what justice is. Could you give that right quick, Mr. Fuller, your compensatory definition of what justice is? The compensatory definition for justice is one that I made up because there's no legal definition for the word justice. Yes, sir. And that is... It's in two parts. Part one is guaranteeing that no person is mistreated. Part two, guaranteeing that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help. Underline constructive. A lot of people say they need help. You know, people standing around on street corners sometimes say that they need help, and they do. Uh, you know, that's why they're standing on the street corner and whatnot. But then sometimes they'll tell you the truth and say, well, I need help in getting me some more money so I can go and get me another bottle of liquor. Well, that doesn't come under constructive help. And sometimes when people ask for change or something like that, you want to know whether, you know, you're helping them to get into a worse situation than they're already in. 
or whether you're helping them to get out of the situation. So everybody on the planet needs help of some type, but you want to make sure that that help is of constructive value. Yes, sir. Now, in the process of giving somebody constructive help, that doesn't mean that you have to mistreat somebody else, because if you mistreat someone, then that doesn't fit the definition of justice. You have to have two things. You have to guarantee that nobody's mistreated, and you've got to guarantee that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help. All right. Stephen, I hope that that answers your questions. Let's go to the phone lines. Uh, what is your quick question for Mr. Fuller to have him address? It? You're on. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, hi. My name is Arhemia. I'm calling from Mount Vernon, New York. Um, pleasure to speak with you, Mr. Fuller. The question I have is, throughout history, historically, every time black people attempted to create their own environment, create their own communities, create their own economic base, we've been sabotaged. Via, via residents in the respective areas who had animosity toward us and or via the government. And I know you've stated several times that there is no place on the planet that is not governed by uh, the system of white supremacy. So my question is, in hopes of trying to rebuild a better community, in hopes of rebuilding a better economy, where can we go where we will at one point in time hope that we won't be sabotaged as we have been in the past? Okay. Mr. Fuller? That's why we need a code. See, we think, we think that there is a place. There is no place. The place is wherever you are. Booker T. Washington got that correct. Cast down your bucket right where you are. Now, I don't know what he meant necessarily by casting down your bucket, but, you know, we can all have our ideas about that. I mean, you know, that, you know, you, a bucket of water or whatever it takes. I mean, till the soil right where you are, okay? But basically what it means is you are one person in one place wherever you happen to be. What you need is what? A code. If every black person is on the same page in how they interact with white people and how they interact with black people, things that you do, things that you don't do, things that you say, things that you don't say. See, this thing about a community, a black community, I mean, some type of mysterious place where we can go, some type of Shangri-La, some type of island, or something like that. The white supremacists laugh at that. They say, wait a minute, I, I'm running the entire planet. So where are you going to go? Wh wherever you go, it's going to be the same as wherever you left. I mean, you know, I own it all because I own you. Now, how is it that I own you? Because I own your mind. So if you start changing your mind, that's when the white supremacists are in danger. And you can change your mind right where you are. You don't need to be in a certain place to change your mind. You can change your mind right where you are. Right where you are. That's what the code mm -hmm. is about. Mm -hmm. That's why the white supremacists understand that principle. That's a universal principle. What the white supremacists do, everything comes out of their minds. They don't have a place. They make a place whatever they want it to be. Why? Because it's in their minds. Yes, sir. See? And they have the mindset of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. Black mm -hmm. people don't have that mindset. We have to first focus on our priority is to replace the system of white supremacy with the system of justice. Yes, sir. And the first step that we do toward doing that is that we don't even talk to another person, white or non-white, unless it has something to do with producing justice. That's a mind thing. And then that's a body thing. Mm -hmm, and that's mm -hmm. what changes the entire world. Yes, sir. Right where you are, mm -hmm. not someplace else, not some mountaintop somewhere. <laughs> that won't cut it. All right. Thank you, my sister from uh, Mount Vernon, New York. And remember, and the key to that is, as Mr. Fuller has stated before, is to begin to ask questions, what is a code? And I found for me that one of the most powerful 
statements that I've ever heard, most profound statement, is a statement that Neely Fuller penned in 1971, which is simply this as he opens up the show. If you do not understand white supremacy, racism, what it is, and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. When I got the revelation of that, it blew my mind because then I began to understand. I went into the sanctuary of my mind. That was the beginning of the code for me. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's go to uh, what line, Gagalin? Line number three. What is your – oh, by the way, you are listening to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., heard exclusively on TalkToHimAtRadio.com. I'm your co-host, Mr. Bobby. This is radio the way it should be heard. You can call me at one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six or gmail me at seven mr bobby at gmail dot com line number three you are now on mr with mr Neely fuller jr What is your question? Make it in brief, please yeah, you speaking to me yes, sir, real brief now, okay, brother. I just want to make a comment, please all right, comment brother Fuller is a educator with that being the case, I would like to add something to the pot. The process of understanding or perceiving a common evil has put many people into a situation of the utmost danger. And that is where we as the people find ourselves today. Many of us cannot believe that they will exterminate us contrary to all the signs in their present conduct. Now, that was a news reporter and a cameraman supposedly shot down today on film. What they are doing, now, I don't know if that story is true or not because they control the media. But this is what they are doing, people. Pay attention. They are creating an atmosphere for us as a people to be exterminated. And we cannot stop them. They control the world just like Mr. Fuller said. Now, Mr. Fuller do not agree with people trying to move somewhere. But when you're going to be exterminated and you cannot stop those people, you have to try to move if you can. That's what people do all over the world. You see people across the world with everything on their back going down a road. They had a home. They had a place where they was living. Sometimes things get so hot, the power is so great. Mm-hmm. You have to move. We need to try to prepare ourselves for what's coming, okay. particularly mentally. Okay. Thank you so much for your comment, my brother. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Mr. Fuller got a question from Robin, and she says this. I have a question that deals with the fifth area of human activity, labor. I try to follow all the suggestions given in the code book, but since the section that discusses labor is among the shorter chapters, it is easiest for me to remember. When I'm at work, I'm cordial, not too overly familiar or unnaturally rigid in uh, my behavior, or at least I try not to be my supervisors who are classified as white males look at me strangely and often state, a stare at, uh, to the point that I'm uncomfortable. I feel a- alienated by white people and that they make me uneasy when I'm around them. It's almost as if they know that I'm, su- I suspect them of being, uh, white supremacists. So they always try to compensate by being overly friendly to me by helping me even if I didn't ask for help. It seems rather forced and I don't think they are being genuine. My question for Mr. Fuller is this. How do I respond to them being too eager or too friendly? How do I respond to those suspected white supremacist stares and glares? This is from Robin. You do the most constructive thing, and you say the most constructive thing. Don't concentrate on the personalities. I mean, if a person is being friendly, there's no such thing as over-friendly. See, that's what I mean by concentrating on principles rather than people. Being friends is great. If I'm around a bunch of white people and they're trying to be friendly, now being friendly means what? That they're always trying to do something constructive that's going to help me. Anything constructive is going to help you. That's what friendship means. People who are bringing you things, ideas or whatever, or bringing you something 
there's some physical thing that's going to be of constructive value, giving you something that you need at the time that you need it, giving you information at the time that you need it. Yes, sir. It's no such thing as being over-friendly. I don't care who's doing it. Anybody, I mean, an animal that's coming up and helping you do something, I mean, even if it's a strange animal you've never even seen before, but you get a constructive result, hey, don't fight that. This is not the time to be uptight. Okay. In fact, you don't have codification relaxes you. It doesn't make you the opposite of that. It, it's racism and not being able to deal with it is what makes you uptight. But the way that uh, the code works is supposed to relax you because you know how to deal with every situation. Mm -hmm. And when people are coming to you saying, you're kind of strange, and so I don't know, it's something about you, but I'm going to be friendly toward you. Well, friendly toward you by what? By doing what? See what I mean? That's what you look for. Okay. See, look for what they actually do. Okay. Now, they're going to bring you something, some information about how you can improve your work, uh, how you can uh, get a better job, how you can get in position to get this next promotion. That's not being, quote, unquote, over-friendly. Doesn't make any difference what their motives are. You just look at what they are actually saying and what they are actually doing. And if you actually get that promotion or you actually get that raise in salary, that's a result. Always look for the result of what they're talking about. Okay. And if you don't get the result that they're talking about, just simply ask questions. Ask questions. I started off saying all problems are solved through the process of questions, questions and, and answers. answers. And just be courteous. And, yes, you sir. know, and always be friendly yourself. Mm -hmm. You let the whole world know, hey, I'm not trying to be anybody's enemy. <laughs> All righty. Uh, let's go to the phone lines. What is your quick question for Mr. Fuller to have him address it? Go ahead. You're on. Line number one. Go ahead. You're on. Hey, good day. Thank you. Um, it's an honor to be talking with you all. I have okay. two quick questions. Real quick there because we're up against the cot. All right, Mr. Fuller, I heard you mention you don't accept donations. I wondered why that is. You heard that I don't accept donations. Yes. And the question is? Why don't you accept donations? Oh, because the white supremacists have started giving me donations. They know how to do that, even through other black people. And then <laughs> the next thing you know, they'll start telling me what to do. Mm -hmm. And I'll be going along with it because now I've gotten used to that money. Okay. <laughs> see, money is something you get used to. Mm -hmm. I know about that. Okay, and your and second... See, so I have to be real cautious about that. Ab absolutely. So that I can keep my business pretty tight. <laughs> now, I don't, you know, I'd like to have extra money and all like that, see, but you never know what's going on, see, so you have to be cautious. And when money is involved, People get ideas. Yes, they do. What's your second question, sir, quickly? All right. Uh, you mentioned that um, white supremacy is a problem for everything. I'm a straight I'm a straight male, but with people asking for gay rights, does solving racism affect, influence that, or are they two separate issues? All righty. Mr. Fuller? Uh, uh, gay rights, are they two separate issues? Yes. Oh, no, everything. you got nine areas of activity. The eighth area of activity is sex. So the white supremacists, the key to their power is you can't let black people do anything unless you can control it. you got economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Those are nine areas of activity. The white supremacist philosophy is you have to control everything that black people do in all of these areas. You let one of those areas get away from you, like religion or sex or politics or education, and you will start losing control in all the mm -hmm. other areas. Mm -hmm. They understand that principle. See, So therefore, they have to control everybody who is non-white when it comes to all of these areas of activity, and sex is one of them. Okay. Now, what they have looked at recently, in the last 30 or 40 years, they say, now, in, among all people, you have people who are homosexual, lesbians, et cetera, et cetera, say, now, what we are going to do, we're going to accelerate the confusion in sex. 
because, you know, we got different sexual categories, male and female. And sometimes males want to be with males. Sometimes females want to be with females and what they call sex and all like that. Well, we're going to add all kind of categories to where these black people are concerned. In fact, we're going to get black people to lead the parade. Now, in order to do what? In order to cause more confusion, because the white supremacists strive off of confusion. So it looks like what they're doing is just saying, oh, this is more freedom. This is more diversity. Uh, you know, this is harmless. This, In fact, this is going to have black people. I mean, we're going to have not only just one or two or three categories of sexuality, we're going to have maybe dozens, all right, which they are adding on as we go. Now, this is what their objective is to cause confusion. See, sometimes people think that Neely Fuller, you know, is homophobic, whatever that's supposed to mean, and he's just going after some black people who are homosexuals and would not know. I'm talking about what the white supremacist agenda is. And even people who are lesbians and homosexuals should be looking at this and hmm. saying, wait a minute, what is their agenda? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay. I mean, that's real important. Okay. Okay. All righty. All right. Thank you, caller. Thank you for thank your you. call. Okay. And let's go to line number two. What is your call for Neely? Uh, what is your question for Mr. Neely Fuller Jr.? Bobby, I just got a short comment, if I can. I know we're toward the end of the show. I just want to bear witness to, to the Honorable Neely Fuller Jr. work. I got I purchased both books. Good. And I continue I continue to purchase books for others as well. I use it in the courtroom. I use it everywhere I go. Uh, words words matter. And uh, I just want to call in and bear witness, man. I think it I think it should be a part of every school curriculum, every program that we have. This great work should be involved. Uh, so that's my comment. Thank okay, you very much. appreciate your comment, sir. Oh, getting through, getting through. Remember, you can get the book at producejustice.com. The name of the book is The United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept, and it is a textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, uh, white supremacy. You have a, a question here uh, from Anthony. Uh, see if I can get it, Anthony. Uh, my question is, Mr. Fuller, have you done any research around the blockchain protocol as it is used with uh, cryptocurrency as personified by various schemes? Now, I don't know what that means, but he did send me a YouTube um, link that I could uh, look up. Uh, and then there's some other uh, stuff on there. I guess it has to do with buying something. I don't know. He's from he's in South Africa, and... Um, he he just wanted to know, uh, have you heard of that, and have you done any work in that? No, I haven't heard anything about it, never heard the term or anything like that. But since he has introduced the term, this is the compensatory process. By him introducing this and telling the people about it right on this program, right now, he's doing his part under compensatory law. And so other people, everybody, including myself, when I get around to it, can look into what he's talking about. All right, because this is how spreading information. Information is power. So anything that anybody out here listening uh, thinks that somebody ought to hear about, ought to know about, that the white supremacists are doing, I mean, just put it out there. This is this is what you call the educational process, and this is how all problems are solved. Okay. And, Anthony, we will try to be careful about using quote and unquote. Um, hopefully, Mr. Fuller did answer your question there as we have the remaining moments um, of our show. Uh, Mr. Fuller, I, I, I've been going around. A, a, a lot of people ask me a lot of questions. And uh, the main question is, um, you know, like I said this week, they wanted to know what's going to happen, you know, when you're not around. And you would say to them what? I still say Follow the logic, like a mantra. I mean, that just cement that in your mind. Logic came with the universe, cause and effect. Ask questions. Now, what is logic? Logic is nothing but the process of getting things done, really. I mean, that's what it's for. Everything is supposed to serve a purpose. So, you just, what's, how do you go about getting things done the way it ought to be done? You ask questions. And then you get an answer to that question. 
And then after you get an answer to that question, that question may not be a full answer. I mean, answer to that question. So then you ask another question Mm -hmm. until you get a full understanding. But keep in mind what it is you're trying to do. You're trying to make a world that's dominated by people who practice justice. That's what you're trying to do. Keep that in mind in every move that you make. Mm-hmm. And so you get there by asking questions and getting answers okay. of everybody that you talk to. Otherwise, you don't have any business talking to anybody if you're not <laughs> trying to get an answer to the question. All righty. Thank you, callers. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. You've been listening to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. on TalkTamedRadio.com. I'm your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and TalkTamedRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. We'll see you two weeks from now. Radio the way it should be heard. TalkTamedRadio.com. The world's greatest radio. The most important question in all racial matters is why. One should always ask it. Radio, the way it should be heard. You've got the power. The world's greatest radio. TalkTainmentRadio.com.